Hello, welcome. In this video, you're creating a bank statement, and I want it to look just like this. It's That's what you're practicing. And if you look at the format, you'll notice that, first of all, you can't see any grid lines. And that's because if you go to View and Grid Line, you can toggle them on or off. So I do want you to turn off those grid lines when you're ready to submit your work. But in the meantime, let's, let's actually turn them on so we can see where things are. You should also know that when you print, you can then toggle the grid lines on or off from this screen by going to formatting and you can show the grid lines or hide them here. So if you're going to print something you can always have that option right here to turn the grid lines on or off. So that being said the only other thing to really think about are these two lines right here because when you're setting up a spreadsheet you can always toggle and play with lines by clicking on borders. You can even change the color or the type of line, the thickness, and you can select borders in whatever way you want. So I would play around with that and your goal is to get two horizontal lines like you see here. Notice that in this spreadsheet, the setup is quite different than what we've been doing in previous work. We have essentially a balance column here. All of our transactions though, the amounts are in a single column and the description of what those transactions are are listed over here. And this is quite different from what you might have been doing before this. So before this, you would say, okay, one column for my deposit, deposits, one column for my withdrawals, and then one column for my balance. The idea, what we had done, we say, okay, let's say you start with a thousand dollar, do a hundred dollar balance, and then you have some deposits, one, two, three, four, some withdrawals, zero, zero, let's say two, three. And what we said in previous work was you can call to the balance right here by hitting equals D2. You can add any deposits, subtract any withdrawals, hit enter, and then take that formula and drag it down and it calculates the balance of your account as you go along row by row. Here it adds $1 in deposit, then $2. Here it adds $3 and in all cases it's subtracting the numbers here. They weren't significant before because of the zeros. You're subtracting two here, so let's just test it. 103 plus three is 106, minus two is 104, it's working. This was our general layout. Column for deposits, column for withdrawals, and column for balance, but here we don't have that. And that presents us, presents us with an interesting problem. How do we calculate the balance here as we go down based on the transaction amount and the description? So I'll give a couple of hints in this video. I'm not going to give the complete answer, but you should decide at, at what point you've heard just enough of a hint to try it out on your own. So let's just say what the goal is. This is kind of the first hint, and it's a really, really small one. It's not too helpful, but if you want to go from here on your own, you can. Basically, uh, what you want to do is think, how am I calculating these numbers? If you're doing it by hand, step by step, think about what you're doing. To get this number, 3482, you'd have to look at the starting balance. And then you would say, well, I would look over here to see what my first transaction is. It's a withdrawal. And if it's a withdrawal, I subtract the number that's in this column. If it's a deposit though, I add the number that's in that column. If it's an ATM, I subtract that number that's in this transaction column over here. So if we think about the categories, they're basically deposits here here and here, and if it's not a deposit, you subtract it. And that's really the thing I would say, is be some kind of if formula that would probably be easiest to write. And you basically start here, say if this cell says deposit, then add the number in D7 to E4. If not, right, if it does not say deposit, then subtract the number in D7 from E4. And then as you go to your next cell, you can't just drag it because of the, the layout here. The next cell is not going to call to the starting balance. It's going to say, well, look in this column. If you see a deposit, add the transaction amount to not E4, but E7, this number, the previous balance. And if it's not a deposit, then subtract this number from the previous balance. And then once you have that formula, you can drag it down and you should get 3,705, which is just the last number here. So um, that's the first hint. So if, if, you, if you think that's enough think, to think about what's going on here, you know it's an if formula, you know it's got a call to this 
column over here and see if it's a deposit. If it is, add the transaction. If it's not, subtract it. You first do that in comparison to the starting balance. And don't just say 3,500. You want to say it's ever in the cell so I can change this number here. And then you proceed from there. So if that's enough of a hint, pause the video. Try it out on your own. If you want some more hints, keep watching. Okay, so I think the next hint is to actually write a formula for this cell. And it's not necessarily the answer to the problem because you just have to do some work on this formula. You can't just drag it down, but I want to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to say if, let's look over here, and you really only need to classify this as a deposit or not a deposit. And the reason I do that is because there are several things that are not deposits. I don't want to get into that. It's just a deposit, add it, and if it's not a deposit, subtract it. So if B7 says or equals deposit, put in quotes, close the quotes, then what do we do? In this cell right here, we take E4 and add it to D7. That's if it says deposit. Now, in what you're doing in if formula, first you have the condition to test. We're saying we're testing is B7 deposit. If it is, do this. If it's true, add E4 to D7. If it's not true, then what do we do? Well, we take E4, this cell right here, and then subtract whatever number's there. And that's it. So this formula, this formula will get you right through. Now you can't just drag it down because, and I will have you fix this, fix this if I start to drag it down. This cell right here, it's trying to follow the pattern of the previous cell's equation, just shifted down by one. That's really what you're doing. When you drag this down, it drags down all the cells it's calling to down by one value. So like in the past formula, it called to B7. If I drag it down, it's going to then call to one below that, which is B8. And then it's going to add E4 to D7. Well, originally it was E4 to D7. That's here, E4 and here D7. But when I drag it down, that calls the cells one below it. And we don't want to do that because one below this cell is right here. It's empty. So in the next formula, you just want to adjust the things so that it's here it's looking at B8 to see if it's a deposit. And uh, if it is, it's saying add E5 to D8, but you don't want E5 to D8, right? Where's E5? Here's E, here's five. You want this cell right here, right? And you want to take whatever that balance is and add it to this transaction amount. If it's a deposit, and if it's not a deposit, you're going to subtract this deposit amount, this transaction amount from the balance. So you'll have to fix, you have to find a way to fix that by adjusting this formula. It's really just a matter of adjusting this number and this number, right? Because right now it's calling, again, it says, or right here, I'll say it again, it's calling the starting balance up here. But as you go down, you want to call to the previous balance, balance lines above it. And again, this is not meant to be the ultimate guide to anything in this spreadsheet. Not right now. We're just kind of playing around trying different features. And one of the nicest things about spreadsheet problems like this is that you start to play around with it and figure out that there are many ways to set up and solve these problems. And every time you try something new, I hope you're pleasantly surprised. All right, thanks.